wily private detective David Marshburn was just one more sneaky trick away from solving the Kelly Bordeaux mystery. I was so close, but yet he wouldn't give it to me. After befriending Nick Holbert and winning his trust, Marshburn had already learned enough to know he'd killed the beautiful 23-year-old GI. And Marshburn had almost got Nick to sign a phony deal that falsely promised him a slap on the wrist for confessing. He would get probation and rehabilitation. But when Nick backs out at the last minute, Marshburn comes up with a new ruse. And it was a tough one because it's a maybe, it's a what if. Still, he had a hunch it would work. It was the uh, indictment that would get him. This time, Marshburn convinces Nick he's about to be indicted for Kelly's murder. The reason why I wanted to do an indictment is because I don't understand indictments. A lot of people don't unless you're in the legal realm. So an indictment will be easy to BS about and hard for him to understand it. The crafty PI shows Nick a fake indictment he'd drawn up himself and gets him thinking he's under police surveillance. So I put a bondsman outside his house in a Crown Vic and he sees the Crown Vic. He said, I told you, man, they're watching me. They're watching me. Nick is scared. This is they're going down. They're coming after me. They got something. Nick is suddenly ready to sign the earlier fake plea deal, accepting the phony offer of a hand slap sentence in return for a confession. And he agrees to lead Marshburn to Kelly's body, buried in a wooded area near his makeshift camp behind Froggy Bottoms Bar. As soon as we pull into Froggy Bottoms, I can't even get the darn thing in park, and he's jumping out and going straight back to where he killed her. Now Marshburn is finally about to learn the answers he's been seeking for the two years since Kelly went missing. And I walk over there to him, and I put my hand up on his shoulder, and I said, Nick, are you ready to tell me? He said, yeah. I said, did you do something to Kelly? He said, yes. And hours later, at the crime scene, Nick would also confess to Detective Jeff Locklear of the Fayetteville Police Department. So I just snapped and zoned out and hit her. And somewhere between what Nick tells Detective Locklear and what he'd earlier confessed to David Marshburn, there lies the truth about what he did to private first class Kelly Bordeaux. His exact words were, while I was on top of her, she started screaming. Nick's confession begins on that Friday night that he took Kelly to Froggy Bottoms, where he was working as a bar hand. I mean, went and picked her up, went back to the bar, I mean, played pool, drink, some karaoke. You know, everything was going good. So as the night went on, she was ready to go home. She went to go pay her bar tab. That's when she started acting kind of funny towards me. Nick went ahead and went outside and was waiting at his car. And while she was paying her tab, the bartender told her, be careful of this guy, he's a sex offender. And she had no idea. And when she came out, she went down the sidewalk of the of Froggy Bottoms. She passes Nick's car and passes him, and she's walking home. And says, hey, I thought I was taking you home. He said, not you, child molester or something like that. So he ran up behind her. I mean, hit her, knocked her out, and I stuck her in the car and took her back to where I stayed at. What happens there? He gets out, he pulls her out, and lays her on the ground. And he pulls her clothes off. He goes ahead and starts um, having sex with her. And he's raping her. Right. Because he, he, his exact words were, while I was on top of her, she started screaming. And, you know, I got scared. I didn't want nobody to hear her, so I, I hit her again. And he grabbed a rock and just beat her in the head with it. And, Is she um, dead at this point? After uh, a few seconds, yeah, she was dead. And then so, what, what did he tell you he did? He wrapped her head up with a trash bag. Then what? Pulled in here. I mean, I went, took her over there and buried her. And I left and went back to the bar. And stayed at the bar. Now, remember that text Kelly's boyfriend Justin had received from her phone on the night she disappeared, saying she had arrived home safely. Well, Nick admitted that he had sent that message and disposed of her phone after he'd already killed her. When Nick confessed. 
he told us as he was going over the river, he threw her phone in. Next, Kelly's family members are heartbroken and outraged over her murder. Mr. Palbert, could you look at me for a minute? And one of them has vengeance in mind. All I could think about, honestly, was just, I'm gonna stab this guy. 